Well, uh, good morning. We are in the studio here this morning with the Physicians Mutual Omaha Symphony Christmas Celebration. It's Chris and Terry, and uh, we got to introduce the whole crew here, Terry. We do. Yes, we have the incomparable Ernest Richardson. Good morning. Good morning. Is this the first time you've seen the sun in a month? Because you're not <laughs> yes. usually up at this time of day. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. It is. Well, welcome. Thank you. It's good yes. to be here. Uh, we know it's uh, because uh, she's living. It's Lindsay Blivin. Good morning. <laughs> hey, good morning. Thanks for having us. Uh, new to the Omaha Symphony so, uh, Christmas celebration. Welcome. Yes. Aaron Stewart, good morning. Hi. This has been, what, how many years since you've been here? Uh, eight years. Eight years wow. since you've been here for the show. Excellent. Ricky, Richard Todd Adams, good sure. morning. Good morning to you. Great to see you. Yes. All right. And Kevin Vortman, how you doing? Doing well. Excellent. Well, this is a great crew because uh, we haven't seen you guys in uh, about a year, so it's been nice to have you back and uh, to new people. And Ernest, boy, here we go. We saw the show on Sunday. It was fantastic as always. Well, thank you. We had a great time. So much fun. So many fun new elements every year. Yeah, we can kind of thank Parker for that. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> our director, he uh, comes up with new ideas to really just continue to dazzle our audiences with amazing experiences. Okay. Well, uh, let's talk to Lindsay here first. Lindsay, so your first time here in Omaha. What are you thinking about uh, the town? I love it. Yeah. I think it's awesome. I love the, what do you call it, the old market area? Oh, yeah. With all of the Christmas lights. And the, there's like a French bistro down there. There's like ice cream. There's like amazing restaurants. I love it. It's beautiful. It really is. Yeah. yeah. And Erin, what's changed since stuff. you were in town last? Oh. <laughs> You know what? Since I have my car here this time, I feel like I'm getting out and exploring more. I don't actually remember. I remember the old market area, you know, when I was here the last time, which was beautiful. Sure. Um, but, yeah, we went to Dundee last night. and Oh, Dundee's my it's favorite. It's so beautiful. Mm, yeah. yeah. I had a great dinner. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, what have you guys been up to besides <laughs> just hanging and sleeping? I'm watching a lot of football. Oh, <laughs> this I, guy, actually, too. I checked out, um, <laughs> is it Block 16? Is yes. Yeah, yeah, I went there for the first First time yesterday. <laughs> Had a nice pulled pork sandwich. Uh, I think I might be going back today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very nice, Kevin. Which actually speaks really highly for it because you pretty much exist exclusively on Jimmy John's and Pickleman. <laughs> <so. laughs> yeah, we have plenty of those here. He's like really well. diversifying his diet by adding that into the mix. <laughs> this is not a false statement. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. How long does this one take to get put together? I know you were you were telling us last year you were already working on this year. Right. We actually program out five years. So we're oh, on, wow. we're, we, we look five years in advance of, of the kinds of things we want to do, partly because we have to get ahead of um, the commissioning that takes place. So when we want a new arrangement or a new chart, um, we need to have enough time to work so that we can get the charts we want. So we're, we're five years out. Um, we'll go through a process in January of, of looking at what was really great this year and say, how can we build upon that and make it even greater for next year? And um, we'll, we'll just get into it seriously in March, and we'll start putting out commissions for new charts and coming up with, with whatever the new program elements are going to be, uh, certainly in March and through June. Wow. <laughs> so I want to talk about um, one of my favorite parts of the show was the Nutcracker Gone Wrong. Yes, really. How did that come to be? I mean, I, I mean, it's just such a, it's so genius, yet where would the thought come from? Um, it kind of started with Home Alone, which is oh. a movie I haven't seen. But oh, really? apparently in the movie, there is some use of uh, the Nutcracker to kind of mm -hmm. make something happen. Yes, it does. So that was the impetus, you know, and then it was a situation where we're not really intending to present, like, here's our little segment of the Nutcracker Ballet. We're not really doing that. There's already a Nutcracker in town, and, you know, that's not our intention. And so that's when Parker, our director, choreographer, sort of gets a hold of ideas, and he starts imagining, well, what would happen if the Nutcracker was supposed to be performed, but things started going awry? So he started thinking about that and kind of coming up with how things might go. And then we determined in the process that a bee coming into the situation <laughs> would, would really set things off. And that's the premise. It goes very far from that. Yes. But, um, but we have a lot of fun doing it. And, and he's brilliant. He's a brilliant comedian. And the dancers are really incredible. So it's, it's really quite a, quite a moment in the show. Yeah, love it. And it's not often you come off your podium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. This time you have a little dance number. 
Kind of. Yes. Spoiler alert. I think dance would be very loosely applied to whatever it is that I'm doing. But yes, I have a moment. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I want to take uh, everybody backstage. Something, Terry, you and I get a chance to do. We get to, we go back. We see you guys before the performance. Uh, you guys are very loose, very comfortable. It looks like, okay, yeah, we just can't wait to get out on stage. Whereas I would think it's going to be like really tense and everybody's concentrating. Um, what do you guys feel like when you're standing back there? I mean... The first song is very high, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there going like, oh, please, please let me hit those notes. <laughs> <laughs> it, that's inward. Yeah. Outward is, you know, we've rehearsed this a lot. We're well prepared and we're ready to go and excited to go out there and share it with the audience. I mean, it's so nice to come out and you see... Uh, the audience that comes every year with their families, like there may be people that come exclusively to this concert, right? We do 10 of them. That's a lot for a symphony to present. And there are people that this is part of their Christmas tradition. So you may be feel, feeling tired. It's cold. You may not want to go out there and, and have to sing all those high notes. But like you walk out there and you're energized by the people that you see out there ready to have a good time. So, Yeah, I think a lot of it's also not – you know, I, we're all in some way wizened veterans. Um, but um, <laughs> I think when you're not living if you're not wizened. Yeah. 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 Wizened, living, living veterans. <laughs> but we got, way to bring it back. Yes. And, uh, but I think, you know, when, when, at least for me, when I was younger, uh, you would tend to like overthink things, you know, like just before you're going on, your, your brain is going haywire and, um, Learning to sort of shut that off mm -hmm. uh, is, especially for actors, I think, is one of the hardest but mm -hmm. most important things to do. And for singers, um, you know, we're the one musical instrument that has a brain, um, and it really mm -hmm. gets in the way sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, especially with something like this, if and like Kevin said, we're so prepared. We had so many run-throughs. I don't think any of us feel at all unprepared in any way that you just let the preparation take its course and um but that that's just something that i think also just takes getting used to and you know as you grow through the process and also i can't think of a nicer group that i've worked mm. with it's well. such a great <laughs> 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 it's such a great vibe backstage because everybody's just so nice mm -hmm. and kind um from these guys to <laughs> Uh, the crew and mm -hmm. resonance and yeah, stage management. Yeah. I, I think that yeah. there's a real uh, spirit in the entire production that makes it possible for the production to be as wonderful as it is, which really starts, it really starts at what you're talking about, this sense of commitment, whatever your part is in the show, whether you're back there you know, decorating the sets or you're working on the costumes or you have these wonderful singers and dancers. There's a real spirit of um, coming together and giving the very best that we have, whatever that happens to be. And I think that's really part of that vibe that you guys are talking about. Definitely. So you came in, I know, for our adoptive family and you were just in town. <laughs> so how long do you have to rehearse once you get here to get the show to look so seamless as it does and get comfortable? <sighs> We it's about a week mm -hmm. and a half-ish. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a weekend in the city. Yeah, so there's a few days yeah. in, in New York in November. Oh, okay. We're mostly, we're like, our responsibility is to learn our music at that time. Okay. And the dancers start learning some steps. Um, cool. And then we all kind of get to go away and do our homework for a little while. So mm -hmm. then when we are arrive in Omaha, everyone's kind of ready to, to really commit to the process and say, like, okay, well, I'm not tethered to not really knowing my music or really sure. knowing sort of like the structure of what we're trying to create. So we come and then it's what, uh, like nine hour days for, for about nine days. For about nine days. Wow. Yeah. And so Lindsay, this is the first time you're on that stage. So it's, what is it like yeah. to come from what you were doing to come to learn a new stage and a yeah, new surroundings? Yeah, well, it's an awesome space. I have to say that. And I haven't actually performed in like a, a hall, like a concert hall before, and the, the the sound that the musicians create is so unbelievable, and the way that that house is mm -hmm. able to hold that sound, and it, it's just so beautiful, and how we're all kind of accompanying each other, and 
um, supporting each other when we're going on that stage um, and all coming together, even in that first number. Um, it's so magical. And the Christmas spirit, I can't tell you how exciting it is to be able to share that with everybody. It really is. It's so exciting. Yeah. I'm going to beat Terry to the punch here because I okay. know she's going to ask this question. Uh, so my wife was with me in the show. And, of course, her thing is, you guys are great. She loves the dresses. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So do we. Yeah. We love those dresses. Okay. Yeah. So how are the, co- uh, the, the outfits this year? What's that? How are the outfits this year? Oh, my God. It's They're magical. gorgeous. I feel like when do we get to wear things like that? Yeah, you're like yeah. floating on a cloud. Yeah. If they fit us, they, they're, they've been so wonderful to us, and I feel like they fit those costumes mm-hmm. and dresses to us so perfectly. It feels yeah. wonderful. On. Yeah, they are beautiful every year. And not that you guys don't look great. <laughs> Did you like my jumpsuit? <laughs> that, was, that, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, that was nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was me and uh, Run Run Rudolph. Um, oh. the, uh, <laughs> you thought it was four women. I thought it was. Yeah. 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 That's it's actually just was Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Impressive. <laughs> All right, so backstage, you guys are getting ready. You're doing your thing. How do you physically get ready? What is your, your motivation? What is that thing you do? <laughs> uh, I So here we go. <laughs> do you have a, a routine that you go through when you're backstage? So we'll, we'll start with Lindsay. How about you? Um, so I, I, I get up, like, um, if the show is at 2 o'clock, I'll probably get up about 9 or 9.30, and I'll do some just starting to slowly warm my voice up, lots of water, yoga. So I do both um, a vocal and physical warm-up, and then I get to the, sh- um, to the theater to prepare for the show about an hour in advance. And then that's just kind of – that's when my I get my head kind of, like, ready to go, and then a final, like, five-minute vocal warm-up before we go out. Mm. There you go. Uh, I like to do a meditation – before I get to the theater uh, and then I do a warm up at the theater I have my family with me so I kind of have to escape and get to the theater a little <laughs> early so yeah. I can get centered yeah. uh, no it's don't get me wrong I'm so happy that they're here with me um, and then I yeah just put on my makeup do my hair put my curlers in uh, and then do a little warm up again before I go out you know I think the physical warm up is for me, is important just to get the blood flowing. Is that eating a Jimmy John's? Usually, <laughs> yes. Or Pickleman's. Yeah. Pickleman's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although, to be honest, like, usually if it's, you know, for like a matinee, so far we've only had two show days, um, So, f- which is a whole thing unto itself because you have to kind of plan not just mm-hmm. before the show but then in between the shows what you're doing because that's always tricky. Sometimes the matinee is great and then you mm-hmm. sort of let, go you know in between and you sort of relax a little too much and then you come back for the evening you're like wait a second i just did this why is it so hard Mm -hmm. um but yeah usually i try to eat something around like noon for two o'clock so that i feel like i have something kind of on my cords you know and you don't feel too that it's not just water you know um but the physical warm-up is really for me more important these days than the the actual vocal warm-up are scales still a thing sure oh okay. okay we do a lot of lip trills (laughs) <laughs> um, I found that like somebody years ago told me I mean Kevin has the high stuff in the show of the two of us but somebody years ago I was I was warming up for something that I had a bunch of high C's in and I kept singing the high C's over and over and over and she was like you know you only get maybe like eight or nine of those a day you can't just keep singing them keep singing them. and i and i went to go do the gig and like the high c wasn't quite there and she's like well you used them all up in your warm up so mm-hmm. you want to like get up there and make sure that you're warmed up but not Kind of overdo it, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I don't really, I don't really love warming up, like vocal warm ups. Um, so physical warm up is a big thing for me. I get up uh, fairly early on a shoot, two show day, drink an entire pot of coffee because I can't. I mean, my <laughs> blood is like predominantly caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a two year old and a four year old, yeah, so like I can't helps. function without it. Um, <clears throat> but then I go to the gym for about an hour. Um, and it's nothing, I won't lift weights on days where I have to sing, but I, I do a lot of cardio and some mm-hmm. core work. Um, and then I eat a little something, sing a little bit, um, then I eat again. So like, to me, it's more about sort of like trying to fill it and fit in, especially before a matinee, a whole day's worth of like activities, mm. uh, before actually trying to start starting to sing in earnest. Um, and, uh. 
and four Ernest. Yeah. Um, um, So yeah, I think that, I think also the thing that's interesting is like we've all been doing this a while and I think everyone has these sort of like uh, iterations on a theme, right? Like of, oh, I found my routine and I do this thing and when I'm, you may not, I, I know I need to have like this kind of tea before I start mm-hmm. to sing which is cra- admittedly crazy but like you get into your sort of like your head and that's the thing that yeah. psychosomatically makes the most sense mm-hmm. to you mm-hmm. well it's the kingpin Ernest anything <laughs> come to mind for you I, I, it's actually very similar the hardest thing for me is to make sure that I have enough uh, calories in the system mm-hmm. because about mm-hmm. an hour before the show I'm not interested in eating anymore but if I don't have food before that then I'm sunk mm-hmm. and my family's in the show, so I can't actually escape them at all. <laughs> um, and they feel that my space is their space. Oh, you know? oh yeah. But I do. I go through the whole show in my mind uh, before I do it. And um, in that process, sort of get into, into my zone. And, and actually, it is a challenge to have two shows. I mean, it's something we, of course, <clears throat> are used to doing. But after you get to that place for the first show you can feel your adrenaline go yeah. down mm-hmm. sure. and that's natural. But then you're like, okay, now I got to get back up. And I just did the show and it takes me, you know, two hours to go through the show. So I'm basically going to do the show, think through the show and do the show again and throw some dinner in the, in between. So it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot of that same kind of thing. It's a really a mental game. Interesting. No, wow. I was thinking that while I was watching, cause it's the first time I've seen you do the matinee. I usually go to the evening shows mm-hmm. and I'm thinking, so they've got to do this all over again. And I know just from being on the air and doing things that uh, sometimes we have, like today, for example, if someone on vacation, I'm going to go back in and do another show. So it's like you do have to get your head kind of – there's that head in the game, and then there's – and it must be hard to have your family there because I think that would be very difficult for me. It's wonderful. It's wonderful, but I mean I hard to separate. Game. Yes. <laughs> separate. You know, I'm yes. in this mode and I'm in that mode. Yeah, so it's true. I get it. All right, right down the line, uh, favorite part of the show this year? Mm-hmm. Kevin? Uh, I like the run Rudolph run. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Ricky? Oh, it doesn't have to be something we're in. No, no it could be anything. No. anything. That would be the obvious choice. <laughs> Everything I'm in. Yeah. Uh... I don't know. I, there's a lot of. I love the Run Rudolph Run. I enjoy the Billy Elfiet. Um, yeah, that's really, really, neat. really cool. That's yeah. really neat. Uh, which I I was I have not done that in the past. That's the one I, that had sort of was in a year that I wasn't here. Um, the song I do at the end, God bless us everyone. I did mm-hmm. that four years ago, and I just that arrangement with. It's so different when I was doing it in New York, just as the solo part. But then when you add resonance to it, it's it's a really incredible sort of powerful number um so i I just i really love that arrangement uh so the beautiful thing of having my seven-year-old with me is that i am experiencing the show through his eyes (laughs) so uh billy elfiet for sure Mm -hmm. like by the end i'm like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm I know that Ben is doing that out in the audience and Aww. he loves Billy Elfia. That was the first thing that he said. I said, What's your favorite number? He Neat. said Billy Elfia. Although so actually cool. he said Run Run Rudolph the other day. Um oh. after the third second time he saw it. <laughs> Lindsay? I had an answer and now I forgot it. And now I'm all I'm thinking about is Billy Elfia. Um, <laughs> I really love um God bless us everyone into a holy night it's so beautiful mm-hmm. um i love the ending of the show and then getting to sing with the audience we wish you a merry christmas all together it feels so lovely yeah awesome you don't get to see it I <laughs> <laughs> for me it's just the sound from the moment that everybody starts singing in the first christmas carol and and all the different sounds and styles that everybody does it's singing and dancing the the thing that's amazing about this cast is that everybody has whether they're dancers or singers, a foundation in classical training, but they go so far into so many different styles that you just can't even believe the same people can do all the things that are done in the show. It's a very special group of people, and to see them all take on these different roles, whether it's park and bark, as we say, or whether they're Mm -hmm. in some crazy costume or whatever they're doing, it's amazing to just see the, the breadth of the show. All right. 
Well, well, I'll tell you what, it is a holiday tradition for me now. <laughs> and no uh, and I saw so many people, like I said, it was a daytime matinee for me. Uh, all those little kids that come in and how excited they are to see you and watching them in the audience. And it's just such a wonderful, wonderful Christmas gift for Omaha. Definitely. Yes. So uh, thank you again for coming back, being a part of the show, as always. Yes. And uh, for you guys, this is great. See some new faces. <laughs> yeah, well, old faces, new faces. You know yeah. what I mean there. It's but... changed a little. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tickets available. You can get them at uh, Omaha. Uh, Ticketomaha.com. Ticket mm -hmm. And uh, just go ahead. We've got that up on the video right here. You can check that link out. And uh, come on out see the show. How many shows do we have left? Are there six, six. shows left? So starting mm -hmm. Thursday, I guess. Thursday night, right? Thursday night, Friday night, two Saturday, two Sunday. Got to see it before it disappears. Yeah, you yeah. have to. Don't miss it. <laughs> yep. All right. Ernest, Lindsay, Aaron, Ricky, Kevin, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Great to be here. Yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Beautiful.